ZDF at Bauhaus. Die Vereinigung von Schall und Raum. Heute mit der Frau, die jetzt schon in Belgien, Holland und in Frankreich der ganz heiße Scheiß ist. 500.000 verkaufte Alben ist eine Ansage. Außerdem erinnert sie so ein bisschen an Amy Winehouse, nicht nur wegen ihrer Frisur. Und sie ist die Frau, die schon von den Anfang 20 zu den Klassikern zählt. Ich freue mich sehr auf ZDF at Bauhaus mit Stella Sue.
Are you ready? Oh, cause if your, your fingers ain't on a jet, you make your fingers in a job to make you want cars. It's you and always come while it takes to act like you're some kind of hard ass scum. But I, I know better than that. I know you're way too long. Oh, oh, huh. It wasn't easy, I know for a strong bond But that's no reason to crack it in the past I don't know, let it go and Just be who you are now And who you're supposed to be
big star in Holland, Belgium, France, you, you almost sold 500,000 copies of your record, right? Yeah, it's Which true. is amazing these days. I've heard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But in Germany you're quite small. How does yeah. it feel to you? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's because, you know, I, I have to do a lot of, of promo and the thing was I really wanted to go slowly, you know, and, and it would mean that um, if my album was coming out at the same time everywhere that I should do promo everywhere really extreme you know so mm -hmm. I did it a lot in France actually mm -hmm. France and the Netherlands and Belgium and not so much in Germany because it was a bit booming there in France so I had to stick there a bit you mm -hmm. know but uh, now I have more time here and uh, I hope uh, work <laughs> back home you play the big venues the big festivals um, as I said you're a big star and now here in Germany you play in a very small setting ZDF at Bauhaus is very intimate yeah how does it feel to you? I like it more. I like it the most. Oh, why is that? Forever. I don't know what it is, but it's, it, it has such an intimate atmosphere. You know, when I play big venues, it's how bigger, how bigger the distance as well from the people and you just okay. do your show, but then you don't really, really feel it. And here, you know, they're just discovering you. So they're listening and they're, they're really close to you. And, and for me, that, that, that keep on being the most intense, uh, intense feeling. Everybody knows the history, you know, the, the, the story about uh, your connection to Milo. He was one of the discoverers of Sailor Sue. How, how did it happen for the people who don't know it yet? Well, it, it was really, it was pretty beautiful, you know, like I said, it, it was never my big intention to become a professional artist, you know, mm -hmm. I, I never took lessons or something and I studied psychology when I was 18, really in the mind that I should become psychologist, you know. Um, but I was 18 and I played two songs in the bar of a friend of mine because she worked there and Milo was, uh, was, was in the bar and he saw me playing and he asked me, okay, you really should do my support act. And uh, he really gave me a lot of advice. It was incredible. It was really my, my musical father at the time because I didn't know nothing. I didn't know what a label was. I didn't know what a manager was, what he did, you know? So it was really like pen and paper and every day we met and we mm -hmm. drank coffee and he said this and this and this. And he really encouraged me to, to, um, to write more songs because of course I had to do a support act and it had to take a half an hour and I had only had two songs. Okay. So it pushed me to make more songs. Mm. And uh, so yeah, he really took me on the road. And because of that, my manager discovered me on stage and oh. my label saw me playing. And so he really was uh, the guy who really kept me along because otherwise I think I would uh, still study psychology. <laughs> <laughs> What do you miss as uh, from your life uh, before you you, you got it? I miss up? I only uh, gain things. I'm 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 never so I, I I've never been so happy than the last years. And it's not because of success thing, but all the things that comes with it. The mm -hmm. fact that I have a goal now, I have an album to work for. I can play music every day. We're on tour with an amazing crew that are really close to each other. So it feels like I'm on holiday with friends or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So. It's, it's actually the best job you can have. But some things are the hardest for me are like that you become a social product. Okay. You know, people can have all kinds of opinions about you and it's, it can be on the internet, it can be really gross sometimes, you know, and you should place it. This one. 
song is, a, is for me personally one of my most uh, important ones. It's been written in a really dark period and it describes perfectly how I felt. And the song calls Break.
made tracks with CeeLo Green, you, you had uh, Milo, obviously, and uh, Patrice. What the hell comes next? Hmm. Oh, then I cannot wait to start on making a an, an, an next album. And, and for me, I'm not s totally not focused on I want that people, that people on it. I just want to make really good music, you know. And I have a lot of people in Leuven, the place I live, who mm -hmm. are not even like in music and I know really talented. I want to work with them, you know. Okay. I just want to make really good songs, yeah. Some people say, or compare you with uh, Adele, Amy Winehouse, and whatever. Does it annoy you, or is that okay? For yeah, you? I think people need to label things always, or something. You know, they they need to uh, put.
put it in a box and I'm okay with that, you know, because I, I thought about it and if you're being compared with the people who are really good, you know, and then I, and you cannot uh, complain or something. But I believe if you listen to the, the, the albums, if you go deeper in the music, then you can hear it something totally different than uh, Adele or Amy Winehouse, you know, it's uh, Obviously. everybody has his own thing, but uh, no, I don't mind to be compared with the best in the end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of your lyrics are... Mm, uh, telling stories about uh, being an adolescent and uh, compared to the music, the music is a bit more mature, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, what comes next when you're working on your second album? I believe my music is going to be only more mature because I believe uh, I know really good now what I want musically and that was a bit different with the first album because my first time ever in the studio and all those kind of things and now I know exactly how I want to sound it, you know, and it's It's more mature, I believe. I think lyric-wise, you know, it was really intense for me. It's it's really important, those lyrics, because, uh, you know, I really suffered from, from depressions in puberty, you know, and I really, I think it's a basic thing, just learn to accept who you are and to love yourself. And that was my big quest in, in those years. And I think it's really cool that on my first album, it's all about self-acceptance and maybe uh, people can identify with it or something. So the lyrics are pretty important and intense for me. But you know, because now I'm two years, I'm already really stable. <laughs> I feel happy. I don't know what to write <laughs> anymore, to be honest. I really should find new subjects. Really? You don't have any topics? <laughs> no, no, because I, I was so... Uh, into my own uh, misery. I was really absorbed by my thinking and my analyzing and my issues and it was really easy to write because there was nothing else on my mind. And now I'm like, uh, oof. What about love, success, people? Maybe the success thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the love thing, I never, I don't have love songs. I think it's pretty rare, but uh, because I always had a had a good love life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what can I say? You only can write good love songs when you're sad. I think and so. Lonely. I'm afraid I can. You can always only make really good, intense music when you're sad. Yeah. Sad, I believe. Yeah. Is in New York they won't make Is in I'm gonna be there That city's scarlet And I'm gonna be there But in Bauhaus they want me Is in I'm gonna be there Spreading the vibe It's all over and over I'm resting like in calling there Shilly dilly wally dilly dilly Shilly shilly yeah Shilly The vibe is on right, I, 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 cause you never had it easy, I know, but I still remember you, and the one we used to say so, I say this is my song for you, my friend, you can only see that I can hardly let things go, and no, oh yeah, so listen to the sound of my voice. Your body's sending all my love And it's giving me no choice No, no, no Cause listen to the sound daddy voice oh, oh, Rock him up and there's a freedom fighter uh, And he's handling it choice And I know But uh, you rock him up and there's a one of the bed To what the seas, what you really did in the end But what you're gonna, gonna do, I don't know I'm official and not fall down Cause see, it's the wisdom of a not fool around I wanna to be good sensey on the ground Yes! Yeah. Oh, you never had it easy, I know But I still remember you And what we used to have so I said, this is my song for you, my friend You can only see that I Will never forget, yeah, yeah
Some people say musicians should be, in a way, um, affected by politics, for example. What about you? Do you, do you, are you? Are you interested in politics, in world politics, or, or in Belgium politics? No, what I believe, uh, I, I think that, that that's, that's really bullshit. I believe uh, that's totally up to the musician, because in the end you're there for making music, you know? And uh, people then, then uh, uh, you know, then... Uh, you know, think I oh, should do this and, and but that's that's your own decision. But what I feel and what I really want to do, I cannot wait, is just to do something for um, for a charity. You know, those kind mm -hmm. of things. I cannot wait to do that. Mm -hmm. But politics itself, I don't know nothing about it, and it really doesn't affect me or something. What kind of charity? Which yeah, topic? I don't know. For me, it's uh, it's it's like. Um, yeah, you know, just like uh, giving money to poor children or something, <laughs> you know, those, those kind of things, or ba maybe ambassadors of like make a wish or like uh, sick children or those kind of things. I'm already thinking about it. I have a list that I want to uh, to achieve or something. You could sell your private jet. Maybe I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once you said you won't sing in Flemish because it doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I guess you compared it to German as well. I, yeah. Yeah. And why is that? There's a lot of people singing in German, for example. Yeah, but uh, the thing, uh, it's different, you know, you have German rap, that's something different that uh, I think is pretty cool, and also Flemish rap, but soul music, I don't love this, it's, it's personally, but I don't love the sound of of the words in Flemish, especially. It's really like, it's, it's not charming or something, you know, so okay. 
for me, it's, the sound of words are as important as the words themselves, you know, so. What would be in Flemish to say, um, I don't like the Flemish sound? How Can do you say it in Flemish? In Flemish. Ah. Ik hou niet van de Vlaamse klank. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Never really into music Till I was about nine years old, old, old. You know I can't control myself from grooving It is not for me to show
Oh. 